Welcome back. Um, I'm going to try something a little bit different for today's lesson and I'm going to use a different program to record. So things might look a little bit different today, but um, we'll see how this goes. So today we are going to talk about function notation and evaluating functions, specifically when they're in function notation. So um, function notation is just a special way of writing functions that's a little more advanced than what we've seen before. Um, you may have been exposed to this a little bit in Algebra 1, but we don't use it a lot. So there's some real benefits to using function notation, um, but it's really a pretty simple idea um, of just replacing the y output value with the name of a, the function, which is indicated by a letter, and the input variable for the function. So what that looks like is it takes an equation like this one, y equals 2x plus 7, and we just replace the y with f of x. So now our function is f of x equals 2x plus 7, or f at x equals 2x plus 7. And what this means is our function's name is f, the input variable is x, and the formula for our function is 2x plus 7. So again, our input variable is x. The output, instead of being y, is f of x. So that means what we get out of this. So we're not multiplying f and x. This is um, notation that means it's a function evaluated for a particular value of x. So when we evaluate functions, in the past, before, if we wanted to evaluate a function, it would say something like, find the value of y, which is equal to 2x plus 7, if x equals negative 3. Um, and you would just take and you would substitute in negative 3 into that equation. So y equals 2 times negative 3 plus 7. It's essentially the same process that we're using when we use function notation. So with function notation, the only difference is we're going to show that input variable along the way. Instead of just writing y, we're going to write f of negative 3. So we insert um, negative 3 into that equation anywhere there's an x. So notice, first of all, it says f of negative 3. We've put negative 3 right here where x was. And we've also substituted negative 3 into the equation right here where we had an x. So anywhere there's an x, if this is our input variable, then we're going to put negative 3 in anywhere that we have an x. So then we just work the problem out. We use our order of operations. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, and negative 6 plus 7 is positive 1. So f of negative 3, or the value of the function f at negative 3, is equal to 1. If we were to work this out the other way, it would just say y equals 1. And that's correct, y equals 1, that's our output. Um, but the nice thing about using this notation over here is that it tells us not only the output, but also the input at the same time. So we know that we're going to get the output value of 1 when our input value is negative 3. So it's super handy because we can identify output values and their input values without having to then take this answer and write it as an ordered pair. Okay, so let's get started on some practice problems. We are going to mostly be working with evaluating functions today. So we're gonna start with this first set. Um, we have two equations here. And this is the other thing that's really handy about function notation is you can have multiple equations and we don't need all the extra work or all the extra instructions because we know which equation we're using, using just by looking at the name of the equation in the problem. So we have two equations. We are working with equations f and g, and they're defined in the instructions part of this section. So f of x is negative 5x minus 14, and g of x is negative x squared plus 9x minus 1. How do we know which one to use in the problem? Well, we look at the letter that's in front of our input variable. So if we have f of negative 9, we're going to substitute in for negative 9. So we have an f here, which means we're going to use this equation. So notice I've substituted 
negative nine in right here because that's where X is in the equation. And then we just use our order of operations or plug that into your calculator and negative five times negative nine minus 14 gives us um, 45 minus 14, which then simplifies to 31. So the value of the function f at negative nine is 31. All right, the next problem, um, number three, uses the function g. So we're going to use this equation and substitute all of the um, spots where there's an x, we're gonna plug in 0.4. So we have where there was an x squared, we have 0.4 squared. Where there was a 9x, we now have nine times 0.4. And then we simplify, and this is super important. You have to do the exponent applied to the 0.4, not negative 0.4. So it's 0.4 squared, which is 0.4 times 0.4 or 0.16 still negative because that negative gets tacked on after you square the 0.4. Subtraction comes after exponents. So that is a common mistake is to make that a positive 0.16. So negative 0.16 plus nine times 0.4 is 3.6 minus one. And then G at four tenths is equal to 2.44, that's our final answer. So we know our input of 0.4 gives us an output, output of 2.4. All right, and then the next one is a, even a little bit more advanced because we are evaluating f twice for this problem. We're evaluating f at one and we're evaluating f at negative four. And then after we get those answers, after we get the output at one and negative four, then we subtract. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this does. So we're gonna plug into the F equation for both of these. So we're gonna do for F of one, negative five, and then in place of X, we put, point, we put one minus 14, minus, and notice I've added the brackets here so that we are going to simplify that entire expression before we do the subtraction. We need to know the output at one before we can start working with that other part of this expression, which is the output at negative four. So the output at negative four, we're gonna find by taking and plugging in for x, negative four. So negative five times negative four is negative 14. And then again, we can use our calculator or we can use our order of operations to simplify this. Negative five times one is negative five minus 14. Negative five times negative four is negative, is positive 20 minus 14. Simplify both of the parts in parentheses. And then we get negative 19 minus six, which is negative 25. Okay, at this point, um, whether you're in class or remote learning, this, was, this would be the time to pause the video and work through the problems two, four, and six on your own. Um, and then when you're finished, come back, continue with the video. I will show you the answers to these three problems, and then we can go on to the next section. Okay, so you've finished two, four, and six. Let's check your answers. Number two should be 15 and a half, negative 15 and a half, or you could leave it improper and it's negative 31 halves. Number four, you should have gotten negative 113. And number six, you are going to double the output of G when you input 12. So you first input 12, find that solution. Then once you get it, you double that and you get negative 74. So if you just got negative 37, you gotta still double it. All right, so if you have any questions on how to simplify those problems, be sure to ask, reach out to me and let me know that you didn't quite understand and I can send you a more detailed explanation or help you um, in class. All right, next up, we're gonna get a little bit more difficult again and we're gonna have two more uh, functions defined for us here. So we were using F and G before, now we're gonna use P and Q, both with inputs of X. P is one half minus four thirds X. 
Q is the absolute value of 3x minus x cubed. Um, and again, we're going to look at the letter in front of the problem to know which um, expression to use. So for instance, this first one has a P, so we're going to use the P equation. So 1 half minus 4 thirds times, and then in place of X, we are putting negative 9 sixteenths. So that's going right there. Now, you can use your calculator on this, and you have that um, magical ABC button on your calculator that makes this um, easy to input and work it out, especially if you have one that shows you the entire problem up the top. But you can also use um, what we know about fractions. This is actually not a very difficult problem if you cancel some of the numbers in the multiplication that we have happening right here. So remember when you're multiplying and you have a numerator and a denominator, that are both divisible by the same number, we can cancel that and make this a little bit simpler. So if we cancel and we work this problem out, we get one and one fourth. All right, because it ends up being one half plus three fourths, okay? One half plus three fourths. If you plugged it into your calculator, you would have just jumped right to one and one fourth. All right, the next one is Q, it's a Q function. We're going to have Q evaluated at negative 2. So we're using the Q equation and we're going to substitute negative 2 in for x and x, which happens here and here. So we have 3 times negative 2 minus negative 2 quantity cubed. And those are all, that whole thing is inside of absolute values. So we're not going to take the absolute value of anything until we're completely done simplifying on the inside of this expression. So let's simplify. We have 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So we end up with minus a negative 8, but that becomes plus a positive. And negative 6 plus positive 8 is positive 2. And the absolute value of positive 2 is positive 2. All right, one more before you're going to pause the video and do some of these on your own. And that one is number 11. On the next page, we have 7 minus Q evaluated at 4.5. So we're going to use this equation again. Um, and this time, there's a couple different ways you could do this. Okay, so one way that you could solve this problem is first to figure out what Q evaluated at 4.5 is. So if we take that Q function and plug in 4.5 where we have X's, we're gonna have three times 4.5 minus 4.5 cubed, and we're gonna simplify inside that absolute value, which would give us 77.625, the absolute value of negative 77.625, which is 77.625, okay? Um, and then once you have the value of Q at 4.5, you could take that solution away from seven. So you're gonna replace this part of the expression with your answer that you got here. Now, I like to work my problems out as one um, pro long problem. Because to me, the more complicated things get, the nicer it is to just have everything worked out in one spot and work my way down the problem. So here's how I would set this up. And if you plan to go on into more upper level mathematics, this is also what I would recommend that you do. So I'm just going to rewrite um, the problem seven minus Q evaluated at 4.5, but I'm going to rewrite the Q, point, Q at 4.5 with the Q function and 4.5 plugged in. So seven minus the absolute value of three times 4.5 minus 4.5 cubed. And now I'm gonna do the same thing I did over here, but I'm gonna do it right here. And then at the end, I'm gonna subtract from seven. So I'm gonna take three times 4.5, I'm gonna take 4.5 cubed and see what those give me. You can use your calculator for that. Um, I'm gonna subtract, which gives me, it should be a negative um, 77.625 there, um, which, but the absolute value is 77.625. So we get seven minus 77.625, and then 
that gives us a solution of negative 70.625. Okay, here's where we're gonna pause. If you need to go back and catch up and write some of those notes down, you can do that now, but then you need to complete numbers eight, 10, and 12, and then come back and check your answers. Okay, so hopefully you've finished numbers eight, 10, and 12. Let's check your work and see how you did. So on number eight, you should have gotten 110. On number 10, your answer that you need to get is negative 23.5, that's the correct answer. And number 12, the correct answer there is 10 and a half or 21.5. All right, or 21, sorry, not 21.5, 21 halves, my bad. Again, if you did not get any of those answers correct or you're um, not sure how to do those problems, please ask. All right, next up, we have a couple of different types of problems here. On these ones, we are going to be working with an application problem for number 15, but on 13 and 14, we are going to be given a function, f of x equals 3x plus 19, and we're gonna be told what the outcome is, and we're asked to find what the input value was to give us that output. So in other words, on 13, if f of x equals 34, find x. What was the x value that we substituted in to get 34 as a solution? All right, so we're gonna try, we're gonna set this up um, with f of x. We're just gonna rewrite that equation. So since f of x equals 3x plus 19, we're gonna replace that part of this equation with 3x plus 19 and that's equal to 34. And now we're just isolating x. We're working backwards to solve for our unknown variable x in this equation. So we add 19, to, or sorry, subtract 19 from both sides, which leaves 3x equals 15, divide both sides by three, and x equals five. So if we plug three, or sorry, five, back into the function um, 3x plus 19, it would give us 34. All right, let's look at 15. And now 15 is an application question. We're gonna do part A and you're gonna do part B. So Owen paid a landscaping company $108 for an initial lawn treatment. So that's an up upfront fee that you pay, the, you pay one time. Then he pays $74 per month thereafter. So this function right here, P equals 108 plus 74 T, represents the total amount of money. So P of T, is the amount of money he pays if he has them come treat his lawn for T months. So this T right here stands for the number of months they have come and treated his lawn and the output P of T tells us how much he owes them or how much he has paid them. So we're gonna find P of 24. What does this represent? So we're gonna use that equation we're gonna substitute in 24 for T. So we plug that 24 in where we had T. Grab your calculator, take 74 times 24, and then add 108, and you get 1884, 1884. What does this mean? Well, 24 was what we substituted in for T, and remember T stands for how many months they have treated his lawn. And P of 24, the output is 1884. And remember, that's the total amount of money he will have paid. So the interpretation of this is after 24 months of lawn service, the total amount paid is $1,884. Okay, part B is a little bit different because they're telling you how much he's paid and you have to find the number of months that he's had them come service his lawn. So this one, part B, is a lot like number 13 and 14 where you are given the output and you have to find the input. So you're gonna set this up with P of T equals 29.94 then solve for t. So 
the way that you set that up is 108 plus 74t equals 2994, and then solve for t, okay? So pause the video, and you're gonna work out numbers 14 and 15b, and then come back and check them. Okay, let's see how you did. Number 14, if f of x equals negative 62, find x, you should get negative 27. Part B, how long have they been treating Owen's lawn if he's paid $2,994? Oh, that's a lot for a lawn. I hope they're doing a good job. Um, so when you did that work and you solved for T, you should have gotten 39 months. T equals 39 months. Did you get that? I hope so. All right, let's take a look at our last section. And this last section is where we are going to take and substitute in an algebraic expression into our function. So this is gonna be a little different because it's not all numeric. It's not just numbers. We're not gonna get a number answer. We're gonna get a new equation when we're done with these problems. So again, we have two functions defined for us. We have f and g. On this first one, we are going to use function f because we have f of c plus two. So just like last time, we were taking whatever was in this spot right here and plugging it in for our variable, we're gonna do the same thing. But you have to make sure you put parentheses around it. Okay, so f of c plus two equals negative four times. Right here where x was, we're gonna put c plus two in parentheses. We have to have that parentheses, otherwise we will get the wrong expression when we're done. And then plus nine at the end. Now, we're not done. Even though it's not just a numerical expression here, we can still simplify. So what we're gonna do is we're going to distribute to find the next step. So we distribute that negative four and we get negative four uh, minus eight plus nine and then combine like terms. So after you distribute, we combine like terms, which would be the negative eight and the positive nine, which gives us negative four C plus one. All right, letter G. Um, on letter G, or sorry, number 18, we're using function G and we are substituting in, our input is negative 4y cubed. That's gonna go right there where x is, and notice x is cubed, so we have, or sorry, squared, so we have to square that entire expression. So you need to remember your laws of exponents here. So we plug in that negative 4y cubed right there where we had the x, and that expression is squared. So I think of this almost like a distributing rule, okay? So you're gonna, this is negative four gets squared and the y cubed gets squared. And when you square negative four, you get 16. So negative four times negative four is negative 16. Y cubed squared gives us y to the sixth because you multiply those exponents. It means y cubed times y cubed. And then the minus five, he's just minus five. And on this one, we don't have any like terms. We don't have any more distributing to do. We don't have any laws of exponents to simplify. That's it, we're done. That's our new expression. All right, you ready for the last one we're gonna do together? We have G and F. So we're gonna do G evaluated at 2M plus one and F evaluated at 3M minus seven. We'll see how well you remember how to FOIL on this one. So. Let's substitute in. First of all, we're gonna substitute in to the g function. So negative x squared minus five becomes two m plus one squared minus five minus um, function f evaluated at three m minus seven. So negative four x becomes negative four times three m minus seven in parentheses um, plus nine for the plus nine right here. Okay, don't lose any of that. Notice again, I need to get these individual solutions before I combine them by subtraction, which is why I have the brackets here and the brackets 
here, okay? Right here, be super careful here. You cannot distribute that exponent. You have to FOIL. So let's quick review what FOILing looks like. You have 2m plus one times 2m plus one. We have to distribute first, outer, inner, last. Okay, do you remember how to do that? 2m times 2m is 4m squared. 2m times one is 2m. One times 2m is 2m. And one times one is one. Combine like terms and we get 4m squared plus 4m plus one minus five comes from right there. That's a lot of review. Hopefully you kept up. Minus, then in the other parentheses, this one's a little easier because all we have to do is distribute that negative four. So make sure you keep in mind your rules with negatives and positives. Negative four times three M is negative 12 M. Negative four times minus seven is plus 28. And then the plus nine, he's not in the parentheses, so we just drop it down. Combine your like terms within your parentheses, here and here, and we get 4m squared plus 4m minus four plus 12m minus 37. Why is it plus? Because I'm going to distribute that negative to make this positive, and then this positive 37 becomes negative 37, okay? And now combine like terms with everything. So anything from that first part or the second part that you can combine, we're gonna combine and we get 4m squared plus 16 minus 41. Okay, so two problems left for you to do on your own. Hit pause, do 17 and 19, come back, check your answers. All right, let's see how you did. 17, we're evaluating function f at 7w minus five. You should have gotten negative 28 w plus 29. And g, we are evaluating that function at a minus three. That one was a squared minus six a plus four. That's it. <laughs> Thankfully, we're done. That was a long one. How did you do? I hope you did well. I hope that you understand things. If you don't or you have questions, please let me know. All right, that's it for today. Um, now you can get started on the homework and we'll see you next time.